Now, the SCLP's Margaret Ritchie has landed herself in hot water with the Speaker. It all goes back to last Tuesday. During a debate on an environmental improvement scheme for the markets area of Belfast, the Minister went off, some might say, at a tangent. Mr Speaker, I have to say, when I see the proposer of this motion, Mr Maskey, in the context of the markets, I think of one thing only, and that is the events surrounding the cruel murder of Robert McCartney. I think of Mr Mar Maskey's remarks in the immediate aftermath of this event, or of that event. On a point of order, I think, first of all, it's very regrettable that the Minister wants to introduce the tragic murder. It is a point of order, Deputy Speaker, but just let me finish. If the Minister is in any way trying to align me with what was a brutal murder, which I have repeatedly condemned, then she'll be listening to my lawyers in a very, very prompt, quickly time, because it's an absolute shamble, a disgrace that this Minister will seek to detract attention from an issue which is an environmental scheme in a small residential area at the cost of less than £2 million, which she herself is in part responsible for delay. Seeking to, sorry, the point of order I want to make, Mr. Mr. Deputy sorry, Speaker, is that you, the man... Down a moment? I really need to know what the point of order is. The point of order is that the Minister, in trying to distract which, which was not even a male criticism of her own handling of, us, of this issue, even though I could go much further to criticise the Minister for her failure to look after this community. But the Minister is seeking to draw me into association with a brutal murder, which I am on record repeatedly for condemning. And I am advising the Minister to be very careful and choose her words, because my lawyers will be looking and scrutinising Hansard. This Minister will not run off at the mouth at my expense. That's the point of order. Uh, carry on, Minister. Um, I, think, I think of Mr Maskey's remarks in the immediate aftermath of that event and his stance in relation to the violence that greeted the police when following up their investigation in the markets area. Well, Alex Maskey may not have gone to his lawyers, but he certainly de didn't let the issue lie, and there were complaints to the Speaker's office. This morning, Willie Hay gave his ruling, and it didn't go well for the Minister, despite an attempt by party colleague Dominic Bradley to ride to her defence. But William Hay was not to be deflected. Here's how it played out. Order members, before we proceed this morning, I wish to come to remarks made during the sitting of the Assembly on Tuesday last, the 30th of September. When studying the official report of the proceedings, I noted uh, with concern comments made in relation to Mr Alec Maskey by the Minister for Social uh, Development and when she was responding to debate on a private member's motion. Indeed, my own concerns about the Minister's comments were shared by other members of the Assembly who approached me in the hours and days following the debate. My concerns arose uh, from two issues. Firstly, while there were no own parliamentary expressions were used, the remarks did not, in my view, come up to the standards of good temper and moderation that should be expected uh, from debates uh, in this House. Secondly, and perhaps to compound the issue, the remarks in question bore no relevance whatsoever to either the subject of the motion being debated, the floor of the House at the time, or any comments made by any member during the debate itself. For both of these reasons, I found the Minister's remarks to have fallen short of the requirements of standing orders and the standards uh, of this House. The point of order made by Mr Maskey provided him with an adequate opportunity to reply uh, to the comments. And I would encourage the Minister to reflect on the reply and my comments here uh, this morning. I would also remind all members of the Assembly that these standards for which I have spoken, good temper and moderation of debate, apply uh, to all. Point of order. Um, Mr Speaker, could you explain to us why um, you have not referred to good temper and moderation in other cases, because there were numerous examples of uh, bad temper and lack of moderation in many speeches up until this point, and why are you, uh, why, why are you uh, 
bringing in this particular ruling at the, uh, in respect of this particular incident? Well, I really have to say to the member, at least on about four occasions in this House, I have spoken to, to members and to ministers on first of all going outside the debate on whatever that debate is on the floor at the time where, where we're debating it. And secondly, at least a number of occasions, I have encouraged members to be of good temperament and moderation uh, when they're speaking in this House as well. This is not the first occasion. And I think if anybody who reads Hansard, anybody who looks at the recording, will clearly show, will clearly show that the Minister on three occasions went totally outside the debate of the House and the debate that was on the floor at the time the debate was happening. Well, we saw Dominic Bradley there trying to ride to the defence of the Minister, having a bit of an altercation uh, with the Speaker, and indeed we saw him with the Deputy Speaker, uh, David McClarty, earlier there too. So obviously uh, in bolshy form today. Uh, well, Mark is with me. Mark, uh, this uh, was a bit of a slap on the wrist for Mark Ritchie, but we can't, uh, we're trying to find out, I suppose, what the specific rule is that she's broken and what the specific punishment is, if anything. Yeah, I mean, there, there are rules on keeping order in the Assembly, but, I mean, they seem to, to really deal, I suppose, mainly with sort of physical disorder. For instance, uh, uh, if any member willfully assaults, molests, obstructs or acts in a dis disorderly manner towards the Speaker or any other member, they can be named and, and, and thrown out. So, that it sort of implies something that's more sort of physical rather than language. Now, he did actually say, it was interesting, he said she didn't use unparliamentary language. Of course, if you call somebody a liar, that would be seen as being unparliamentary. She didn't actually use that. Um, uh, instead, he's talked more about good temper and moderation and says that he's relying on advice that he's given in the past. Nothing, I have to say, in the uh, standing order I have in front of me, number 65, actually talks about good order, uh, good temper and moderation. He did talk about it being sort of not directly relevant to the debate, which was meant to be about improvements uh, for community projects within the markets. And there is a separate order uh, in which he can stop uh, members making speeches that are irrelevant or, or repetitious um, in that way. So uh, I think he's depending a little bit on irrelevance, a little bit on his past guidance. But to some extent, I think he's sort of pushing the boat out a little bit on this one because uh, there's nothing that I can see um, in the latest copy we have of the orders that actually talks about uh, members having to keep to good temper and moderation. But well, it's it's merely a ruling. He hasn't uh, imposed any uh, punishment or ban on the minister. Yeah, I mean this is different in kind, say, to uh, when Iris Robinson was accused of using unparliamentary language uh, towards Michael Majimsi, and uh, where she essentially was accusing him of, of lying and then refused to withdraw it, and then it went to the Speaker actually ordering her out. I think because the Speaker himself knows that he's operating here in a little bit more of a grey area, um, that he's not going to sort of come through uh, with a full welly and start ordering Margaret Ritchie to withdraw or, or be removed from the chamber. Instead, it's, uh, if you like, a, a bit of a shot across the bows.